the million dollar question goes, if you could wish for anything, what would you wish for? Or if you could change anything, what would you change? Well, I feel like I'm going to be single the rest of my life because I always have these high expectations for women. Like, I always have this, like, oh, she has to have this, she has to have that, she has to have all these things. First, if you could ask for anything, what would it be? For my boyfriend to be here. Okay, <laughs> next question. Probably for... <laughs> Probably to win the lottery. Win the lottery. Okay, what would you buy with all that money? Um, probably go shopping. Probably buy myself a new, like a really nice car. Okay. And a nice house. All right. Yeah. All right. Awesome. How are you? I would love to go to Disney World. Disney World. <laughs> okay. Why Disney World? Oh no, everyone. I don't know. It's fun. Yeah, what? everyone says it's fun. Okay, so it's like, okay, that's cool. Yeah. How are you? I'd probably travel to Australia. Why Australia? Swimming, king, there's like a bunch of different animals and like there might be pretty views. Is oh, there views, yeah. is there a particular animal? Kangaroos. Mm, kangaroos. And koalas. And koalas. Kangaroos. Okay. Flippin' amateurs. Capacity is a strange thing. Capacity is really our enemy. Capacity can also be our greatest ally if we have enough of it. Now, I'm not one to say whether or not God intervenes and whether or not something is a miracle, for I believe and I credit everything to God. But sometimes there's these rules or standards in life you have to follow or else you're unfit to live or sustain life. Capacity could mean that you were born into a good family and wisdom and knowledge was passed down to you in order for you to attain better things. And capacity could mean that it was not within your means to have such a family. Capacity could mean that you were in the right time and the right moment with the right knowledge in order to survive or that you had the right body and training and capacity could mean that you didn't and you were not, you could not afford to live. If you want to make the most out of any situation or, or impact any kind of scenario, the best thing to do first is to weigh our capacity, to know our limits and to know our strengths and to know our shortcomings. When Solomon was on the cusp of becoming a king, his father David bestowed a lot of information and wisdom on him. And one of the imperative parts of wisdom was how to please and seek favor from the Lord. And Solomon did this to the point where the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Ask of me of whatever you want me to give you. And Solomon weighed his options. He weighed his situation. And he thought, I'm, I'm just a child. And you have so many people that follow you. If I could ask of anything, Lord... I ask that you give me the wisdom to discern and rule your people. No matter how many times I read that, I'm always awestruck. Because out of all the things he asked for, he doesn't ask for the three most influential things, which are money, power, or relationships, or i.e. women. But he asked for wisdom or information. What strikes me also is how God responds and he says, you didn't wish for death upon your enemies or to live long or for wealth. And I'm going to go ahead and give you wisdom. But because of that too, I'm also going to give you wealth and honor. And if you continue to do my decree and follow in obedience, I will give you a long life. And because of all this, I will also make you the greatest of all kings. So there are no other kings that are equal to you. I'm not saying I'm jealous, but that's something that really moved me in my faith and more in my search for meeting and wisdom or just anything. It really just shakes me down to my core. An example of his bestowed wisdom, which is reiterated allegorically in a number of cartoons and movies, is the ruling between the two prostitutes, in which in the harem there was two prostitutes that each had their own baby, but one of the babies died. And thinking that the other prostitute wouldn't notice, she swapped her baby with another baby that was alive. And the lady whose baby was alive, she noticed that she it was replaced by a dead baby. So they took their quarrel to King Solomon. And Solomon responded, This one says my son is alive and your son is dead. Well, that one says, No, your son is dead and mine is alive. And you could imagine it's a pretty crazy situation. And you imagine, like, what do you do? But King Solomon says, Bring me a sword. And I will split that baby in two. What rocked my feeble mind at that time was the baby who knew her son was alive said, no, let her have it because at least he will live. 
the case ruled in her favor. And Solomon knew because Solomon had that sort of sort of wisdom. He had all types of wisdom, which included maternal wisdom, which was astounding. So something I want you to consider and think about is every day you have energy and every day you put that energy towards things. Every day you have your choice and every day you have actions. I push towards the perspective that the physical is easy and what's really challenging in life is challenging yourself mentally because anyone can work a 40 hour work week and just put in their time and that's it. Nothing more is expected of you, no need to push yourself. So the idea here is to wake up that latent process and latent cognitive, the things you don't really think about. Because when you think about it, we don't have all the options. And we have all the options, but we're not going to be able to take all the roads. And so we got to make the best decision. If you had to split that baby, you only have one baby to find out it wasn't worth it. But this woman knew. She had some type of wisdom or introspective. And so did King Solomon. In another video, I'm going to talk about strategies and how to approach something. But things I want you to think about is... Get opinions that differ from your own and get opinions that might shake you and cause you to think about other possibilities and other factors that play into a bigger role or scenario. Learn to get multiple opinions and ask a variety and different questions of what ifs. What if I went with this? What would happen? And what if I went with that? King Solomon sacrificed personal wealth, status, and the women in order for the greater good and the tribe. Now, it's hard to say what exactly pushed him to have this stance or have this sort of temperament or heart. But one thing's for sure, he was able to eliminate the influences from these things in order to have this objective view. Now, when it comes to introspective and wisdom, there's one thing he did like a boss, and that's sacrifice the part for the whole. Sacrifice his wants in order for everyone else's wants and needs. My stab is he sacrificed his comfort of not knowing and just saying, screw it, give me all the women, give me all the money, and give me all the status. He's like, no, I want to do this the right way, and I know I can't, so I'm going to admit that. I'm going to melt my fault. Now, in another video, I'm going to go deeper into wisdom, but I'd like you to think about this. What's something in your life that you could sacrifice for something greater? Because chances are it's something that you really want, but that want and desire for it is probably impeding you from growth. And sometimes in life, we're not in a position to ask for that thing. But wouldn't it be the best way to get that thing is if you had the wisdom on how to maintain it and be a good steward towards that? Who is the greater man in your eyes? The one that poorly administers a million dollars or the one that does 10 like a boss? Well, that's it for this video. If you found this of any value, thank you. Thanks for watching. Please like, share, subscribe, comment. And as always... Love you guys. Keep wisdoming. Ciao.